Welcome back inside the Simplified Technology Solutions Intermissions Report. Austin Bruins taking on the Minnesota Wilderness here in this lone game this week on a Thursday night. 20 minutes of action are in the books. Before we go ahead and give you the recap of everything that's happened here at Riverside Arena, let's go ahead and take a listen back to a conversation that I had earlier this week with Bruins defenseman Grayson Valent. Grayson, thanks for taking the time coming out here. I know you guys are getting ready for the game coming up against the Wilderness, so I appreciate you jumping on here. And, and uh, we really enjoy having the players, especially the new guys, giving them the opportunity to talk to the Austin faithful. So thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks for having me here, TJ. <laughs> First thing I want to talk to you about, we talked to this, about this a little bit just a couple minutes ago, but you are a Vancouver native. You grew up in the Burbs outside of Vancouver, and you're obviously a Canadian citizen, but you also have dual U.S. citizenship, and that's kind of a little bit of a story there in regards to how you became a, a dual citizen. Why don't you tell us how that happened and, and what the uh, what the red tape is, so to speak, for you? Yeah, well, the opportunities in the U.S. are uh, very, very good and advantageous. It's something that I kind of wanted to look towards just looking forwards in, in my career, just in business after hockey too. And so my family was applying for a green card for my sister and I, and this is probably when I was about 16, because it's easy to do when you're younger, uh, before you're an adult. And right at that time, there's a change in the legislature. And if your parents did not live in the US for the specific amount of time, it could be pushed on to one of your grandparents. And my mom was an American citizen as well, but she never lived in the U.S. Uh, up until now. But so it got moved on to my grandma, who actually grew up in Oregon for about 18 years or so. And so as that was all happening, it turned out that I was able to get the citizenship. And I mean, I was really excited about that. And I'm, I'm really happy to be an American. So it's pretty interesting. And I mean, it's funny to think, too. I mean, the Pacific Northwest, whether it's Vancouver or Oregon, I mean, that's just kind of that's where your family's based out of. Right. One way or the other. It's the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, exactly. My parents always say that, you know, I got to stay within a time zone of them. So I can't like <laughs> right now I'm kind of pushing it being in central, but they want me to stay, you know, in either Pacific or I guess mountains, the next one over. So that's awesome. But you've played now your entire junior career and even your, you know, most of your organized hockey days all came in Canada. This is your first year here in the U S is there any differences Leagues aside, but are there any real differences between Canadian hockey and, and the North or, or, you know, the U S game? I don't necessarily mean between the BC and the NA, but is there just any other quirks between the, the two different countries and how things operate? I mean, that's really, that's really hard to kind of answer to think about. Cause right now, really my only um, experiences are kind of BC versus NA and the differences in the two leagues. I mean, you have different players coming over, like, you find that the Americans have a little bit of a different style. Kind of when I was playing in BC, you know, it's the, the difference in the players that were coming over versus the players that had grown up in BC or Canada. Um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint those differences, but you definitely do notice them. One of the things that has kind of been the same, you know, going through your junior hockey career is you, you've always played in a small town, whether it's been in Canada or whether it's been here uh, you were telling me that Austin is actually the largest town that you've played in, in your junior hockey careers. Is that true? Yeah, it is. So I spent three years uh, in Port Alberni, which is on Vancouver Island, which is just West of Vancouver. And so that was a town of about 17,000 people. And then actually last summer I got traded to Merritt and that's a town of 8,000. So quite a bit smaller to come here to 25,000 people. I mean, it's not a whole lot more than say Port Alberni, but I mean, it's the biggest. So how far is Merritt from the Vancouver Island? Were your parents a little upset that you're going to be kind of moving away further or is it pretty close? Well, actually, it was, it was better in Merritt because Merritt's only a three hour drive from my house in Vancouver, whereas okay. if playing on Port Alberni, you got the ferry and all that. The ferry's about an hour 40. And so kind of to get there early for your reservation, all that, it's usually about a five hour trip. So it saved us money to live in Merritt in terms of having my family come back and forth to visit and also just time. So being here in Austin's probably made things a little bit difficult on the family getting down to see you. Yeah, well, it's but unfortunately, it's, I mean, not only is it a flight away or two flights, but just with the border right now, there's, there's no way they can really get up here and get back to normal life in Vancouver right away. So it's pretty hard. But Do you feel a little yeah. bit more isolated? And do you think that's kind of a good thing that you're a little bit further away from family and just continuing to, to grow and be your own man and, and kind of be on your own and a little bit more independent? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a cool experience. Um, I mean, playing away from home for the last three years, 
you know, you're away from home, but you can get to your family really quick. Um, whereas now obviously it's a couple of plane rides away, but I mean, obviously I miss my family and I liked having them close when I was there, but also now it's just, it's a new experience and, you know, kind of grown up. So it's just something different. For sure. For sure. I feel your pain there. I've got one parent in Arizona, another parent in North Carolina. So it, it feels like, you know, it, it, there's, you want to be around them all the time, but at the same time, it's kind of nice being independent and being on your own. But I want you to walk me through a little bit. How did you land in Austin? What were the details and the circumstances? Obviously the BC and with everything going on with coronavirus and everything right now and leagues not playing and all that stuff, it, it kind of, you know, you were thrown into just, you know, a rock tumbler in terms of what you got to do this year to play some hockey. So how did you land on Austin and why did you end up coming down here? Yeah, well, it all started last year. So after the end of the season in Port Alberni, I asked for a trade. I just wanted to get into a, a new situation. And at that point, uh, the trades, so the trade didn't open up till June. And that's when I got traded. But the draft, the supplemental draft, I guess it was called, happened at the beginning of May. And so I got drafted by Springfield. And that was an option I was looking at um, with all the stuff going on. You don't, you don't really know what's going to happen whether BC will get shut down or even down here, what would happen? Um, so I got drafted by Springfield and then time kind of went on throughout the summer and I was weighing out the two options between Springfield and going to Merritt, which is where I was traded to. And then I just felt there's quite a bit of uncertainty down here at the time and BC seemed to have a really good plan in place. So then I decided to go to Merritt and right around that time, Springfield had also folded. So, I mean, I was, there wasn't really a choice there. They like, well, I got to go to Merritt and so then I got put into this first draft and that's where Austin picked me up. And at that time I was already in merit and they reached out to me before. And I just said, you know, I, I'm in merit right now. And you can't, I, I found that I couldn't leave. You know, I can't leave merit and come here to an unknown when you don't really know what's going to happen is uh, you guys went through that stretch in December where you, you couldn't really play in Minnesota. So I was right. staying there and we were playing games and everything. And then our government decided to shut us down. Um, still, I'm not really sure why we had two, cases in the entire league from September to November and they did not transmit to anyone but they still decided they want to shut us down and then things just kept getting worse there they eventually banned all uh, players 19 and up from going on the ice so I got to watch my younger teammates practice while I could not actually be in the rink itself I could only stay in the dressing room um, so that was kind of continuing on and I just didn't see anything progressing in BC so that's when I was continuing to talk to coach Howard and uh, he got me down here and now it's NA hockey, NA life. How much did you know about the NA, you know, spending three years in the BC and then thinking you're going to spend your fourth year in the BC and wrap up your junior tenure? How much were you familiar with the NA, whether it be Springfield or Austin or anywhere else for that matter? Did you kind of have an understanding of the league before all this was going on or was it totally brand new to you? I mean, I've always heard like there's there have been players who've I've played with in BC who spent some time in the 